I got into this business of taking pictures of Nashville's monuments and statues about 15 years ago when I was uh, driving out West End Avenue one day by the park, the Centennial Park, and I saw a monument in the corner of the park that I didn't know, didn't know about and never had paid any attention to it. So I stopped my car and uh, it was a monument, and you'll see it, to the terminus of the Natchez Trace. Can you all hear me? The terminus of the Natchez Trace, in other words, where it ended after it got to Nashville. And I thought, well, you know, that might be kind of an interesting subject for, for slides to go around the county and try to find monuments and statues. And so I took off from there, and over the next several months, I went around with my little brownie, I guess, and <laughs> took about 75 or 100 pictures. I'm not going to show them all, but uh, some of them are well known. Others, I think, you'll find are very obscure. You may not, I might, I might let you guess on a few of them. But it was a lot of fun, and so uh, I don't, I don't uh, profess any expertise in photography, but it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun doing it. So let's get going here. Let me turn this thing on. Can you see that? <laughs> turn it on. Yep. See that it? It's on. I oh, it's on. It's on. Yeah, it seems to be on. Okay. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Naturally, we're tangled up in the wires here. First one we got is one that everybody knows, or at least knows of. That's our good friend, Timothy de Montbrin. Timothy de Montbrin, who really gets credit for being Nashville's first citizen. And that's down on the, on the river bank on uh, the Gay Street Connector. And uh, as you probably know, he came here as a fur trader and raised a family in Nashville. He had another family up in Illinois, I believe, or Canada maybe, maybe Canada. And uh, Ken Feith knows more about him than any of us because he wrote, a, he wrote the script about uh, Mr. DeMubberin for the Tennessee History of Culture and History of Tennessee, Encyclopedia of Tennessee History and Culture. And that's, that statue was, uh, I've got the names of the sculptors. Do you remember who did that one, Ken? There's not a light here, is it? Well, anyway, uh, so much for, for Timothy de Montbrun. Oh, by the way, he supposedly lived in a cave on the Cumberland River. And that cave can be seen from across the river if you walk through Shelby Park bottoms of the Greenway. You can see the cave with the iron bars over it. I went in it a number of years ago and I can't believe anybody really lived in that place. <laughs> the next one is also on the riverbank uh, right up the road from Fort Nashboro and that's James Robertson and John Donaldson greeting there in an appropriate place. Uh, they were really, they get credit for being the founders of Nashville, whereas DeMarmin was really the first citizen, I guess, but he didn't found the city like these two men. And Perea Mims was the sculptor on this. He's a well-known sculptor and did a lot of sculpting, if that's a good word, and uh, you'll see some others he did. Uh, metal plate barkers to both of those men are inside Fort Nashville. Okay, that's the James Robertson Mar uh, Monument in Centennial Park, and it was erected in 1903. It's a 54-foot granite shaft. Uh, the inscription on it memorializes uh, James Robertson and his wife, Charlotte Reeves Robertson, and all that. it's right there by, by the lake. This is also in Centennial Park. It's the Thomas Monument. Uh, it was unveiled in 1907 to the memory of John W. Thomas, who was president of the NC and St. L. Railway. 
and he was also president of the Tennessee Centennial Exposition in, in 19, 1897, a year late, by the way, you know. Should have been in 1896, but he got slowed down and didn't, didn't make it. This is again in Centennial Park. This is the Confederate private monument dedicated in 1909 to the heroism of the, Conf of the Confederate private soldier. It contains 600, I counted, 600 or more names uh, inscribed on, a metal on that metal plate there. Uh, it was erected by Frank Cheatham, <coughs> excuse me, who was a former general with, with Hood when he came to Nashville in 1864. Didn't get rid in, in the town, as you know. But uh, it was erected by the Frank Cheatham de Bivouac, number one of the Association of Confederate Veterans. And the sculpt on that was George Zolnay, Z-O-L-N-A-Y. Okay, the next is one that I really was surprised to find. That's the general, uh, uh, Judge John Haywood monument. Judge Haywood was an early lawyer judge in Tennessee. I think he came from North Carolina in any event. He lived in a beautiful farm out on the Knowlesville Pike called Tusculum. And this monument happens to be in the front yard or sort of the side yard of the Tusculum Hills Baptist Church. It's barely seeable because it's kind of tucked in a nook and cranny there in the church, but it, uh, it was erected in 1959 by the Tennessee Bar Association, the Tennessee Historical Society, the Tennessee Historical Commission, and the County Court of Haywood County, for whom that ca the county is named for Judge Haywood. Uh, he's not buried there. He's buried, we think, <laughs> under the asphalt of a Texaco station, or what was a Texaco station, next door. And there's been talk about trying to dig him up and put him on the lawn of the plaza of the Supreme Court building. But to do that, we'd probably have to track down literally hundreds of Haywood descendants, and that's just an impossibility. So I expect he'll lie there under the tarmac for the rest of his years. <laughs> okay, that's not a very good picture, but that's the Colonel Luke Lee Monument. It's at the entrance to Percy Warner Park, right here over here in Belmede. Uh, he gave, Colonel Lee gave the, the land for that park, and uh, it was, he named it for his father-in-law, Percy Warner. Uh, it was given by the officers who served under Colonel Lee in World War I in the 114th Field Artillery, and uh, Lee was founder of the Tennessee and as you know, the Tennessee newspaper. He was a U.S. senator. He was quite prominent. He was controversial, but he, uh, he w did do a great job in, in World War I. <coughs> Next is the Gold Star Monument, it's called. That's in a corner of Centennial Park, right by Marshall Dudley Combs Funeral Home. And, uh, I'd, I'd never paid much attention to it. I mean, I'd seen it and knew it was pretty, but I didn't know what it was till I went over and looked at it. And it's inscribed, quote, in memory of the sons of Tennessee who gave their lives in the Great War, 1914 and 1918. Uh, the sculptors were Bell Kitty and Leopold Schultz. And, and the names of, of those lost in that war are inscribed on the tablets on the monument. Gold, gold Star Monument. That's the Korean War Monument. It's at a War Memorial Plaza uh, in front of the War Memorial Building. The names of Tennesseans who gave their lives in that war are inscribed on tablets, plus a history of the war. And this was erected in 1992. I'm sorry, I don't have the name of the sculptor. But That's also on the War Memorial Plaza. That's the Vietnam Monument. Uh, the inscription contains names of 1,829 Tennesseans who died in that war. 
And the sculptor was, is Nashville's own Alan LaCroix. I'm sure a number of you know Alan. This is also on the, on the plaza, although not down on the main level, but kind of as you go up off the uh, main level up onto 8th, yeah, eight, 7th Avenue. It, this is the, uh, to the women of Tennessee for their heroic dev devotion and self-sacrifice during the war between the states. And it was dedicated in 1926 by the Tennessee Historical Commission. Fame is in the cellar. A woman on the left and a wounded soldier on the right. This is a Confederate. You have, you, you have your hand up? I thought you had your hand up. Oh, OK. Oh, by the way, we'll, I'm going to run through these, and then we'll take questions later. Uh, Oh, I had the wrong one. That's what. That's why you had your hand up. I'm not going to go back over. That's the. Now the next one is one that everybody knows: the equestrian statue of Andrew Jackson. This is one of three of just alike. The other two, one is in Washington D.C., and the third one is in in Jackson Square in New Orleans, and uh, that's on the east side of the Capitol, and. Uh, the sculptor on that was, and the other two, which are identical, was Clark Mills. This was unveiled in 1880. That's the James K. Polk tomb on the northeast side of the Capitol grounds. And he's buried there with his wife, Sarah Childress, who was from Murfreesboro. He was governor uh, from 1839 to 18. 43, he was a U.S. president from 44 to 45, and he lost, he was elected president and senator, but he lost the election for governor of Tennessee, by, I think by lean Jimmy Jones, I believe. Okay. On the southeast corner of the Capitol grounds is Sergeant Alvin York, Tennessee's World War I hero. Uh, he was from Pall Mall, or Pell Mall, if you please, Tennessee, up in Fentress County. And uh, the sculptor on this was Felix de Weldon. Somebody said that his helmet is Italian, <laughs> that Mr. de Weldon was Italian, and, but it, it looks like a World War I helmet to me. <laughs> Take your pick. Again, on the Capitol grounds on the southwest corner of Sam Davis, the boy hero of the Confederacy. Uh, it was erected by contributions from citizens of every state in the Union. Sam Davis was born in Smyrna in 18, or near Smyrna in 1842 and was hanged for refusing to reveal his sources of information, hanged in Pulaski in 1863. Last on the Capitol grounds is Andrew Johnson. He was the last statue to be put up there. Uh, he was controversial. He was tough on Nashvilleans. And he, it took a long time to get Andrew Johnson up on the Capitol grounds. <laughs> but he was civil governor in the, in the 1850s from 53 to 57, and then was made, uh, Lincoln was made military governor in 1862 till the end of the war, and that was when he was so harsh on Nashville people. Okay, that's on Vanderbilt campus. Oh, I didn't turn it. Y'all punch me when I don't punch this thing. Okay, Commodore Vanderbilt on the Vanderbilt campus at the main entrance. Uh, it was presented to Vanderbilt University in 1887 by citizens, citizens of Nashville. The sculptors were Giuseppe Morelli. Uh, he, he, the sculptor was Giuseppe Morelli. He also uh, sculpted the Battle of Nashville Monument, which we're coming to in a minute. That's Commodore Vanderbilt. Okay, that's the NC and St. L, Nashville, Chattanooga, and St. Louis Railway Monument. 
It's in Centennial Park by the old locomotive that's over there on the west side, west, northwest corner of the park. I guess the locomotive's still there. Uh, it was, well, this was, this monument uh, is, a, is the doorway of the old NC and St. L Railway building, which stood at the corner of Ninth Avenue and Broadway. And when they demolished that building, whenever it was, uh, they, they moved the, the locomotive, one of those locomotives to the park, and then took the transom from the door of the offices there at Ninth and Broad to uh, made the a bar relief depicting two types of steam locomotives. And that's, that's the NC and St. L Railway. Okay. That's the Battle of Nashville Monument after the tornado ripped through there in 1971 or two and after the interstate kind of messed things up so that you couldn't get to it. And this, that was the shape he was in for a number of years. And uh, now all that's there is that stone base. But the next picture is the same bronze on the recreated monument there at the corner of Battlefield Drive and Granny White Pike. And that was erected in the late 90s. Mr. Wilbur Creighton Jr. gave the dedicatory speech for it. And uh, it's, there's a little park there. I read in the paper the other day where the, they may create a new entrance and exit for the interstate. That, see, this land was originally going to be part of, was going to be a interchange for the for I-440. But they just, the government, after condemning all that land, decided they didn't need that, that uh, interchange. So they gave part of it to the Tennessee Historical Commission, and that's where this monument is. It's a beautiful thing. Had some recent uh, graffiti that had to be worked on, and unfortunately, roller, roller blade people use that little, plat that little <laughs> platform of that <laughs> fun, but that's it's a beautiful thing. Uh, by the way, the original monument was erected in 1926 by the Ladies Battlefield Association, association led by Ms. James E. Caldwell, the president. It was dedicated on Armistice Day, 1927. The sculptor was Giuseppe Morelli, who said, who was supposed to have said, I love this monument more than any work I've ever done. Well, well, we know. Okay, that, everybody recognizes that as General Forrest. And he's standing uh, he's on his horse at the, in one of the entrances to the Cordell Hall building. Now that's not Jack Kershaw's General Forrest out on Franklin Pike. <laughs> that one is plastic. <laughs> I didn't photograph it. But I, I'm not denigrating General Forrest. That, this is a, a better rendering, I think. Uh, it's at the west side. The sculpture was Perea Mims in 1952. And three more of his works at the same building. I'm going to come to them in a few minutes. Somebody said that Forrest is, uh, is there saying to that young boy, said, saying, if you'll join up my, with my cavalry, you can ride a fine horse like this one. <laughs> I didn't hear him say that. <laughs> Okay, this is nothing special, really. I mean, it's not a great monument rendering. That's Captain Tom Ryan on the what used to be the back side of the Ryman Auditorium, and I guess now it's the front side on what that Fifth Fifth Avenue. And uh, he was, as you know, a steamboat captain, and he got religion, and they and he built this edifice as a, as a gospel tabernacle. I could have spent hours photographing beautiful monuments in graveyard in cemeteries, but I didn't. But I, I couldn't pass up Captain William Driver's grave in the city cemetery on Fourth Avenue. He was a Yankee captain 
from Massachusetts and he moved to Nashville in 1837, remained to the, loyal to the Union. Uh, he had three sons in the Confederate Army, but he, uh, and one of them was killed. He saved a flag, a U.S. flag, and a quilt, so the story goes, until Nashville was occupied by the federal forces, and then gave that to the Union, and it was flown from the state capitol. Not a very good photograph, but that's, you probably know that, probably know that monument. Uh, that's the Confederate monument in Mount Olivet. 1,500 Confederate soldiers are buried around it, and many of them are known. Uh, it's a 45-foot granite obelisk. Everybody knows Athena, not by Alan Lacroix or in the Parthenon. That's a much more recent monument. This monument is at the west end of the Davidson County Courthouse. And it's kind of obscured at times by bushes that go in front of it. It's a Revolutionary War monument. Uh, in the inscription on the back side says to the heroes of 1776. And this was erected by the Tennessee DAR in 1910. And the names of those people on, of those heroes are on the back side. This is Jerry Baxter, uh, where he used to be. <laughs> This, he's been moved several times. He, he started out at the corner of 16th and Broadway in the triangle there. And then when they built first Jerry Baxter School on Galton Pike, they put him there and he's, he's there when I photographed him. But he's since been moved again. And he's now at the new Jerry Baxter Middle School on Hart Lane off of Galton Pike, between Galton and Dickerson Pikes. Uh, he was the father of the Tennessee Central Railway, as you know, and uh, he was very, very popular, except with the NC and St. L people. <laughs> and uh, so, as I said, he's now at the new site there on Hart Lane. That's a poor picture, but it's to a, I think, little known, con a little known Congressional Medal of Honor winner named Corporal John Lyle, L-Y-E-L-L, -L, given to him posthumously, posthumously, uh, for his work in for his work in Korea in 1951. This this is in Old Hickory, Tennessee, in the little plaza, a little park there in the center of Old Hickory. So that, oh yeah. This is also in the Old Hickory Park. It's, it's, quote, to the veterans of World War II who made the supreme sacrifice. There are 50 names on the back of that monument. Okay, I told you I got interested in this project by seeing that Natchez Trace monument there at, uh, in San Antonio Park. If you look over there across from McDonald's, the Golden Arches, you'll see this monument. Uh, it was erected in 1912 by the DAR. It's near the old Cockle Spring, which is at the point where uh, General Jackson and his, and his army started their march over the Natchez Trace a century earlier. The inscription on the metal plate says, quote, Natchez Trace, Nashville, Tennessee, Natchez, Mississippi, 501 miles. Uh, this little marker, a monument, is to Captain John Gordon. This is on the Customs House Northwest Corner. He was the first postmaster of Nashville, Captain Gordon. He was a ten defender of Fort Nashboro against the Indians. He was a captain of a spy company in the Creek Campaign with Jackson and did many other heroic acts of valor. His dates are 1763 to 1819, Captain John Gordon. This is also a little monument on the Customs House corner. This, 
this, this is the, what's called the, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the South Field. And that's where the, uh, it was on the 200 acres extending all the way down to the river. And it was famous as a mustering ground. 4,000 Tennessee militia were reviewed here by Jackson and Lafayette, or Lafayette if you prefer, in 1825. And this was erected in 1928. It's called the South Field Monument. This is the first Tennessee Infantry Monument in Percy Warner Park. It became the 115th Field Artillery, which mobilized right there at that spot in, 19, in April 1917 and became part of the 10th Division in France. It was in many big battles, very well-known, well decorated, highly decorated uh, unit. Well, I couldn't resist this monument to a horse. <laughs> this is on the Bellmead Plantation, and this is supposedly where Enquirer lies, but Ridley Wills tells me he doesn't think he's really under there. <laughs> but it, who cares? <laughs> it's a beautiful monument, and it's really kind of obscured by buildings. Enquirer Monument. Okay, that's a... Uh, on the Hume Fogg property, on the one of the corners, uh, that's to Alfred Hume. It's on the southwest corner, by the way, of Eighth and Broadway. He was the father of Nashville public education, and uh, it was erected by the public school children of Nashville. By the way, he died in 1853. Another one of Alan Lacroix's sculptors, sculptors, sculptures. This is Ms. Branscom, Ms. Ms. Uh, Margaret Branscom, Ms. Harvey Branscom, wife of the Vanderbilt Chancellor during the 40s and 50s, maybe 60s. Uh, it's a new old science hall, and this was given by David Pat Wilson to Vanderbilt, Ms. Ms. Branscom. Oh, this is the entrance to Fort Negley over on Chestnut Street. The, inscri the inscription, which is barely legible, says, Fort Negley, built by federal forces, 1862, restored by the WPA in 1936. Now, of course, there's been a lot more restoration since 1936, but that's the, as far as I know, that's the only monument to Fort Negley. This is uh, the entrance to, to the Nashville Reservoir on 8th Avenue. It was built in 1889 on the site of a Union Army fortification we built during the Civil War. Not the reservoir, but the fort that was there. Uh, originally, the walls were constructed with stone taken from Fort Negley. Well, this reservoir, as you probably know, burst in 1912 and flooded downhill, just tremendous flood, that huge reservoir flooded. I mean, turned the, the waters went all over the place. Uh, the hill is called Kirkpatrick Hill. Well, that's another poor, and that's a good example of my poor photography. <laughs> This one's right over here on Hillsboro, and you've probably seen it many times. It's, you, can, you just can't stop and look at it or you'll get killed. Because it, <laughs> and that's about what I nearly did. Uh, that's in the, kind of in the front yard of Calvary Methodist Church, and it's a Battle of Nashville monument. Uh, it was erected in 1940 by the William B. Bate chapter of the United, um, excuse me, of the UDC. This is another cemetery monument. This was to uh, Governor William Carroll. He was governor from 1821 to 1827, and then again from 1829 to 1835. He was a native of Pennsylvania. He served longer than anybody has ever served as governor of this state. 
and uh, I just thought it was such a beautiful monument at all. You ought to see it. Probably have seen it. Now, that's not my picture, but this is kind of unique in that it's to a well-known Confederate general, <coughs> excuse me, general named, <coughs> excuse me, General William Carroll, excuse me, Judge Richard Ewell, Old Baldy, I think he was known as, and it's in City Cemetery. He was one of Robert E. Lee's main corps commanders in Virginia at Gettysburg. He was captured at the Battle of Sailor's Creek in Virginia just before the surrender at Appomattox. But following the war, he moved to Tennessee and married a young lady from Spring Hill. So that's why he's in Nashville, rather in Virginia. He was not a Tennessean at all, but he did marry a lady from Spring Hill and lived out there, lived his life out there and died and was put in the cemetery. That's Felix Zollicoffer, General Zollicoffer, who was killed as a Confederate general at the Battle of Mill Springs, Kentucky, supposedly, but he was mistaken by his own men, maybe, but anyway, that's where he died. He was an editor and publisher of several newspapers in Tennessee. He was comptroller of the state. He was a state senator. He was a U.S. congressman. And uh, as I said, he was killed at the Battle of, of uh, Mill Springs. That's in the city cemetery. Okay, that's a World War I monument. That's at the entrance to Mount Olivet Cemetery. An inscription says, this monument of granite is dedicated to the memory of the soldiers and sailors of the World War who sleep in Mount Olivet. What do we have here? Okay, this is another Centennial Park monument. This is to Ann Robertson Cockrell. As you drive in the main entrance, it's up just a few hundred feet on your left. And she was a sister of James Robinson. She was the wife of John Cockrell. Their home stood over what is called over Cockrell Springs, which is right there on the on West End. I mean, it would be if you could see it. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Well, who knows what that is? Well, that's the John Murrell Monument. And I went over and looked at it the other day. The hedge around it is gone. All it is is two pieces of stone, one on top of the other. Okay, Murrell was a very <coughs> famous thief <laughs> along the Tennessee, Cumberland, Ohio River. And uh, this was erected by Major E.C. Lewis, who was president of the NC and St. L Railroad, uh, who said if, if they're going to erect a monument to, to a thief, referring to Andrew, to uh, Jerry Baxter, I'll erect one to a horse thief. <laughs> and so Ma Major Lewis paid for this monument to John Merle, a horse thief. It used to have a sundial on it, but it doesn't anymore. Uh, it's, it's nothing to it, that's it, right? They just, where, where is that? It's in San Antonio Park on the west side of, the, of Parthenon, up <coughs> like you're going up toward Flagpole Hill, and it's just sitting out there naked, <laughs> no inscription, nothing. It's my favorite monument. <laughs> this is a, a, re, a fairly recent monument. This is the Holocaust marker on the Capitol grounds and these six cedar trees and a plaque which reads, we must never forget the people of Tennessee dedicate these six trees as a living memorial to the six million innocent Jewish victims of the Nazi Holocaust at 1939 and 1945. Let all the generations remember so, remember so that a Holocaust shall never again occur. Erected in 1986 when <coughs> Lamar Alexander was governor. Again, back to Centennial Park. There are a lot of little monuments over that you just don't notice. This is the Timothy Mart Monument. Uh, 
the tree there and the monument were planted and, er and erected by the Catholic children of, T of Nashville in May 1919 in memory of Lieutenant James Simmons Timothy, U.S. Marine Corps, killed in action at Belle Isle Wood, France in June of 1918. He was the first Tennessee officer to be killed in the Great War. How many know that? Yeah. <laughs> Nashville famous polar bears in Zima Hills uh, front yard. I don't think they're there. Oh, does anybody know? They moved them. Gone. Wish I knew where they were. Yeah, they're, they're right still right there. What? Killed, but set back kind of way. Is it the public housing? That's right, it's the public housing. Okay. Yeah, that's. That was, uh, everybody, we were high school age, had to go by his email to look at the polar bear. I understood they came from the front of a ice cream parlor that he somehow got them and put them in his front yard. Okay, where are we here? This is on Charlotte Pike at Richland Park in front of old Cone High School. It's a DA, it's a Revolutionary, Mo Revolutionary War monument. You know where that is, that's all over on Blakemore. That's the Serpent Monument put up by, uh, paid for by a lady named Fannie Mae Dees. And the sculptor was Pedro Silva, that's ILVA. Okay, uh, that's at the driveway going in tra into Traveler's Rest over off of Franklin Pike. And uh, let me see what I got on that. Of course, that was the home of, that's wrong. That's not that what that is. That's the driveway to Traveler's Rest over, the, the Traveler's Rest, which was James Robinson's home over off of Charlotte. That's what that is. Uh, it's right next door to the Enterprise Rental Car Agency, if that helps you any. It's right where Richland Creek goes under Charlotte Pike. That's Edmondson Monument on Charlotte, uh, in what's called Edmondson Park, and the, and the inscription says this park is dedicated to the memory of renowned and Asheville sculptor William Edmondson, about 18, his dates 1883 to 1951. He was the first black artist to be honored with a one-man show at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. It was, this monument was unveiled in 1981. I uh, bumped upon this monument. I was driving in Galton Pike one day looking for monuments and there, lo and behold, over behind some bushes was this little monument, a DAR monument. It's where uh, the railroad, it's at a railroad trestle in Inglewood. That's the best I can describe it. Probably some of you know where that is. It's, I guess it's the only, only trestle in that part of town. And uh, It's called the Immigrant Trail Monument, and that denotes where the Immigrant Trail, which went from East Tennessee, from North Carolina and East, and East Tennessee, up into Kentucky and back down into the Cumberland Valley here, in the Nashville Valley. And that was, I said, put out by the DAR. This is in Fort Nashboro, down on the river. Uh, it contains a long inscription on a metal plate describing the history and significance of the site erected in 1930, which was the 150th anniversary of the settlement of Nashville. It was erected by the state, the county, and the city through the efforts of the DAR. And uh, there's always controversy about whether Fort Nashville really stood. I don't think it's ever been proven that it stood on that exact site, but that's close enough, I guess. 
okay, on the Davidson County Courthouse Plaza, the two flagpoles at either end. This one is to General William Lee Davidson. It's on the southeast side of the courthouse. He was a Revolutionary War hero, uh, killed by the Tories in South Carolina. General Davidson never set foot in Tennessee, but he was well liked, and so they dedicated that flagpole base to him. And right at the other, another corner, which you can't even see, is, is a similar monument to General Francis Nash, who also was a hero in the war, revolution. He was killed at Germantown, Pennsylvania. He never came to Tennessee. So there are two monuments within 150 feet of one another and dedicated to people who never saw or heard of the state. In fact, there was no state, was there? This is in Centennial Park, the Woman's Monument. Uh, it was the site of the Woman's Building at the Exposition in 1897. And legend uh, on the back side contains the names of the women who made up the Woman's Department of the Exposition. This was erected in 1904. This is, we're nearing the end. In case anybody's nervous. This is the Victor Memorial Bridge Monument, which is the west end of the Victor, of the bridge there on the, by the square, erected in 1955, quote, a memorial to the, to, the, to the sons and daughters of the state of Tennessee who gave their lives in World War II. And these metal tablets on the sides give them the name, rank, and branch of service of all these men and I guess women too who lost their lives in the uh, Korean War and in Vietnam. Yeah. Okay, back to the Cordell Hall building and some more Korea Mims work. This was called Four Humans and a Dog. This is on the north end of the Cordell Hall building and as I said, Perea Mims did that. He also did Three humans uh, on another entrance to the Cordell Hall. We all wonder what's going to happen to the Cordell Hall building. Some, some want to tear it down, I understand. The third one on the uh, Cordell Hall building is by Perea Mim Mims, and uh, those are the pioneers. It's, I think it's three humans and a dog there. I happened upon this beautiful little monument. It is pretty, the situation is pretty. It's on Riverside Drive in East Nashville. It's a monument dedicated to our American servicemen who fought in World War, World War I, World Wars I and II and the Korean War. It was developed in 1933, redeveloped and rededicated in 1959 and sponsored by the clubs of Inglewood. And Debbie Cox, who worked in here for many years, uh, told me that it was recently, not too long ago, damaged pretty severely by an automobile crash, but it's been restored. I haven't, I haven't seen it since I took that picture probably in 1997 or eight. <laughs> Lastly, this really beautiful monument is in Hadley's Bend, Old Hickory, and uh, on the front side, it's, there's this inscription, in memory of the families of Hadley's Bend who unselfishly gave up their lands in the name of progress. And the names listed are Bondurant, Dismukes, Donaldson, Reeves, Hadley, Jackson, Jones, and Overton. And on the back side, it says, Hadley's Bend Chamber of Commerce, dedicated 1996. Uh, I'm not sure whether that the land they gave up was for, for the Old Hickory powder plant in 1918 or for the creation of Old Hickory Lake. Does anyone know? Well, it could have been some. I, I kind of think it was for the powder plant because that occupied a whole lot of, whole lot of land out there. 
I guess that's it, folks. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> Ken? You, Mr. Right after the statute for Donaldson. Pardon? Donaldson? Yeah. You mentioned that something was in Fort Mabry. What's in there? Something uh, relating to them. I don't know. Yeah, I showed, a, I showed a, a tablet to them. Huh? I had a tablet. I showed you a tablet to, to Fort Negley, which is, oh, not Fort Negley, Fort Nashboro. Maybe I'm not missing. Yeah, but right after you talked about the two of them in the statute, you said something about them and, and relating to Fort Nashville. I, I missed, couldn't understand. Does anybody remember what I said? <laughs> <laughs> you said you weren't sure that that was the site of Fort Nashville. No, no, no. This was in the very beginning when they first showed. Well, I could go back and find it. I think, but. Uh, all I know about what's in Fort Nashboro is a tablet or marker sort of telling something about the history of Fort Nashboro. And there's been controversy. I've heard it all my life that that may not be the real exact site of Fort Nashboro. But, and if they build ballparks or something down there, it'll be, have to be moved again, I suppose. Okay. Mr. did you have a Somebody's mind was pretty obscure. I mean, did you um, have a plan for the county or just drive around no. the form? Or how did you? <laughs> As I said, I, um, I got interested in doing this when I saw that Natchez Trace monument there in the park and, and thought maybe that's a good subject for an old, old paper. And so I just started keeping my eyes open and I'd lie awake literally at night and think of places that might have, that I'd seen monuments, maybe didn't know what they were, and I'd go photograph them. And one, then uh, there's a book by a guy named Johnson, I think Leland Johnson, who's got a lot of uh, monuments in it, but not near this many. He has more script, more narrative than I do. But uh, I just sort of winged it as I went along. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. They're going to uncover, or whatever the word is, Cockrell Springs when they do the park renovation. I read that, yes. Is that monument where it will have to be moved, or do you know anything about it? Well, I don't really know where the, where the, it, but, you know. I don't know exactly where the I don't know where spring, spring is. <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't be hard to move the monument a few feet, probably. Yes, sir, do you have a question? Is it? I thought you had. Oh, yes, ma'am. Several years ago, I asked uh, someone in the Metro government for a list of monuments, and there was uh, uh, approximately 1,800 to over 1,000. It's a huge, long list, and it hadn't even been updated for 15 years or more. So you said 1,000 and some? I missed a few, didn't I? <laughs> Was too short. <laughs> well, of course, since I, I did this in 97 and 98, I can think of a lot that are, that I'm, that are there now. For instance, Musica. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chet Atkins is down at Fifth and Union, I believe. And there, there are others, but I really want to kind of concentrate on older monuments. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Well, I was wondering why you were showing that. You had so many DAR uh, monuments that I wondered if the DAR has a list of their monuments because you found some that were so obscure, I wonder if there's some more that we don't know about. Well, that's a good question. I gave this program to the subchapter of the DAR a number of years ago and they didn't know about that when they, <laughs> so maybe they don't, I don't know. Uh, there are, are a lot more, I'm sure, of DAR monuments, but whether they have a, a list, I do not know. That one that I showed is really obscure. It's, it's in a little nook by the railroad track. At, you know where that trestle is on Galton Pike? It goes under, the, it's right there. Ken, have we run out of time? Or? Got five more minutes. 
No, no, this is, this is out, uh, let me see if I can think of a landmark. You know where Greer Stadium and Fort Negley are? This is across 8th Avenue from Fort Negley, and it's a very prominent structure. I tell you, right here in this hall is a very good picture of it, of that reservoir looking down into it. And it burst in 1912 and flooded the heck out of a lot of homes in that area. But it's... Still in use? Oh, yeah. Yes. It's our reservoir. It's where our water comes from. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. When I was in Lipscomb in college, one year and I could get it, was, I think it was a meat company was doing a promotion, kind of advertising uh, to promote their product. And as it, they were, they had hidden a hundred dollar bill and uh, they would put out clues on the radio. And so there were three or four of my friends in college who we cared very little about college. <laughs> but we did care greatly about finding the hundred dollar bill. So one of the clues uh, led us to, up to the reservoir. So we drove up there in a car, and when we got up there, we were disappointed because there were people, cars lined up, <laughs> people down digging in the grass. <laughs> so I, I was the guy that had the car, and we drove around the other side of what to do. And we had one fellow, this was a David Lipscomb, and you, and you, you know, you're not supposed to lie, and, uh, <laughs> but it didn't trouble him. <laughs> so we drive back around, and he announces it's just been found, at, and he created some place <laughs> on the other side of Nashville, and everybody got in their car and left. <laughs> and we got out there and dug in the grass for two hours, never found it, but it was there, and it was found later. It was around a ten-penny nail. Mm. Uh, <laughs> you know, all of us think often about questions we wished we could ask our fathers and grandfathers and grandmothers. My father didn't live too far, and his parents lived pretty close to that reservoir, not under it. They wouldn't have been drowned out, but I'm sure my father and grandparents who lived over near Ward Belmont, which is close to that reservoir, uh, heard a lot about it and probably went over and saw it. You know, that's one of the, I'd like to talk to them about it. <laughs> Moral of my saying is, Talk to your grandchildren and tell them things so that they'll know something about you. Write your memoirs. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you.